Hello friends, it's me and today go touch some grass. Let's check out, I touch grass and so should you touch grass. From the Star Tears. Together, let's go. Let's start. Go touch grass. Mm -hmm. It's a meme, an insult, and advice all in one. But should you actually do it? Get ready to take this silly phrase way too seriously. Siri, open up the group chat. Having nightmares about people's grass was not what I signed up for when I wanted to do this episode. I see grass out there and I'm like, why can't I just go out there and touch it? Oh no. <laughs> this is about to get weird. Hello Internet, welcome to Style Theory, the show that knows the grass is always greener on the other side. Because <laughs> Hello Internet, welcome to Style Theory. They use artificial turf. But today, we are all about the real thing, baby. If you missed the meme, here's the TLDR. When an argument on the internet, say, in the comments, gets super heated, one person usually reaches their limit and tells the other to go touch grass. So they usually don't mean literally. Instead, they're telling the person to take a step away from their keyboard because they have been online for way too long. However, the idea of actually touching grass does have some merit. Like we learned in our feng shui episode, nature is meant to calm us and help us lower our stress levels. But is grass really the magic solution to all of our stress and anxiety? Well, I sent out the call to my team of dedicated and highly stressed grass touchers to help me find out. For the next three weeks, we will be touching hands to grass to see if any of our options can boost our mood and help our mental health. Real talk, being a theorist is amazing, but it can also be highly stressful, y'all. But with my friends by my side through it all, nothing could go wrong. Right? <gasps> no, don't say that. It's a red flag. It's a foreshadowing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Welcome to our first day of grass. Let me actually introduce you to Harriet Catgrass. The second. The first one didn't survive until today. Um, it had an unfortunate cat incident. <laughs> I'm going into this week at a very high stress and anxiety level. There's a lot that needs to happen. I need to turn a 16 page script to a six page script. We have a shoot that's going to happen next week. I need to order all the stuff for the experiment. I need to get everyone on hand for the set. I need to set up the appointment with the studio. We're working on two different Lumen launches. And so instead of my normal coping mechanisms, we shall be petting the grass. I wasn't the only one here on Team Theorist coming into this experiment with a lot on their plate. The chat was brimming. My general stress levels are, um, Hi. I've had a very stressful day. My current stress level here is um pretty high. And I would say that that stress level is having a very adverse effect on my ability to concentrate right now. Right now I'm feeling actually stressed and anxious, which still stresses me out. I love it, but still stressed. Meanwhile, Ash was already forming a bond with their grass. This is Derek. It's a square. I feel like Minecraft right now. I'm going to give him water and he's going to give me sanity. That's exactly what we're hoping to see in this experiment. I'm hoping that with this, we can have some, some good zenning out. <sighs> I can actually breathe for a little bit of this week. That would be great. For centuries, nature has been considered to have great benefits to helping our mental health. However, since about 56% of the world's population live in cities and don't have access to green spaces, indoor plants have become the star of the show. The pandemic saw a spike in people turning to plants to help ease their stress from being stuck inside, with about 73% of adults in the UK saying it helped manage their mental health. While we may not be on lockdown anymore, more, we are locked into our office desks for about 40 hours a week. And right now, my desk is actually my kitchen table, while my real desk waits to be unpacked and set up. I swear I'm gonna get to it. I just, like, need time. Which means I spend most of my days in a high traffic area of my home, full of- to be fair, I understand what she means. Life gets complicated, life gets harsh, and you are unmotivated to do the house chores. Just let things be. Constant distractions and stress triggers. Here, distractions, we'll, we'll give you POV. You're me. Ooh, you see the whole world, the boxes I need to unpack. 
the fresh cut grass that is not our actual grass. Super fun to be me. All jokes aside, I was really hoping our grass could help absorb the stressful energy of my work environment and breathe out good vibes alongside its signature scent. My house smells a little bit like a lawnmower. Not a bad smell, just smells a little bit more like the hair of the earth, as one might say. I don't know if anyone would say that. But you could have just said planet earth. I say that. But the Captain Planet. The only way to know if this aromatherapy or any part of the grass would succeed was to put our emotional support grass to work. A few hours later, we all checked into the group chat to see how it was going. So far, I do think there is a minimal decrease in how stressed I am and how anxious I am and in my overall feelings. Look, I'm touching the grass right now. And I, I'm going to be honest, it's doing nothing. I will say that stopping to touch the grass helped. A little bit. I don't think it had anything to do with the grass itself and more to do with the act of taking a break and doing something different. I feel like Derek and I are still getting to know each other. <laughs> I don't know if I'm really feeling so much benefit from it right now. I love having plants and so that much is bringing me a little bit of joy and I think I need to give him some water soon. He's starting to He's starting to wilt just a little bit at the top. And that sentence chat started my slow descent into grass-induced madness. You see, before our grass could prove its prowess at upping our good vibes, it started to die. Good morning, grass touchers. Today I'm in the conference room. So I brought my grass in here. I feel like the grass, which is getting sadder still. Tragic news, Um, Harriet is not doing too great. You're not gonna like what's happening. It's looking worse than it did. But I feel like my grass is sad and dying. So um, it's stressing me out a little more because I feel like it's going to die before the end of this experiment. I'm not doing much. It's just, it looks so sad. The only thing doing worse than the grass? Me. <laughs> Leave me like dot, 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 dot. Feel the sad. <laughs> I was up very early today because I was panicking about everyone's grass. Having nightmares about people's grass surviving was not what I signed up for when I wanted to do this episode on touching grass. <laughs> I'm not joking. I had legit nightmares. Like wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, stare at your ceiling for hours kind of nightmares about grass. I was so anxious and sleep deprived that I was actually starting to lose it. Jungle camp, we're in the jungle, jungle camp. I've driven myself to madness. I don't even remember filming that. But despite doing everything in our power to keep the cat grass alive, it only got worse and worse and worse as the week went along. Let this be a lesson, chat. Don't get emotionally attached to your grass by giving it a fun name like me, or worse, personifying it by adding some googly eyes like Jerrica, only to have to sit and watch as the life slowly drained out of them. It will only make you start questioning your own existence. And it hurts for Amy twice because you know, two times. Mm -hmm. Stuck in this cycle of thinking about the mortality of grass. And that in turn makes me think about the mortality of like me. And when I think about wanting to calm down and feel better, I don't think the idea is to think really hard about death. It is so flat at this point. I'm worried it's shrinking. I do well with animals, but apparently if it's green, it dies by my hand. I think I'm having an existential crisis. Luna, what are your thoughts? Do you feel less stressed? Well, I'm not sure about Luda, but our grass just might. It turns out that plants can feel stress too. Yeah, plants have stress hormones. If any danger comes by, be it a pesky bug or an overly touchy human, it's not like a plant can pull up its roots and run. Instead, the only defense it has are its genes. According to Jim Whelan, research director at La Trobe Institute for Agriculture and Food, the lightest touch from a human, animal, insect, or even plants touching each other 
temperature in the wind triggers a huge gene response in the plant. Within 30 minutes of being touched, 10% of the plant's genome is altered. This involves a huge expenditure of energy, which is taken away from plant growth. If the touching is repeated, then the plant growth is reduced by up to 30%. Basically, the tiniest touch was enough to stress Harriet out so much that she stopped growing and died. We brought these plants in to relieve our stress, but we never stopped to consider how the plants would feel about it. I don't no chat. Maybe we just need some bigger grass that can handle these bigger human emotions. Or maybe um, learn to accept the truth in life. Life's tough, wear helmet. Mm -hmm. The inevitability of death and accept it truthfully and we move on with our life. Grow up, be an adult. Mm -hmm. Mature a bit. Mm -hmm. In the group chat, everyone was grieving for their dead uh, grass, except for Lee. Hey, has anyone heard from Lee lately? <laughs> That's weird. While our adventure to learn whether or not touching grass could help our well-being was hitting an unexpected snag due to dead grass, you don't have to go through the same thing. In fact, you could become a grass master in a few easy steps thanks to our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community by creatives for creatives, where you can learn anything from how to start a new business, paint like a pro, or yes, how to stop your indoor grass from kicking the bucket early and leaving you adrift in a sea of stress-filled days. I recommend the class Indoor Gardening from Etka Chaudhary, who's a scientist turned gardener that changed her plans when she discovered her love of plants. She's a believer that plants can really bring you peace. See, grass can work if you know how to keep it alive. Etka takes you through the basics of understanding soil mixes, sunlight ratios, water needs, and more to turn the inside of your house into the perfect plant playground. But if gardening isn't your next passion, Skillshare has made it easier than ever to discover a class that fits you and your goals. You can browse their thousands of classes by category, topic, and more. Plus, when you join, Skillshare will ask a few questions to help them recommend the best place for you to start your learning journey. And you can do it on your schedule. No deadlines here. As a special gift to you style theorists, the first 500 people to use the link in the description box will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare. Again, the first 500 100 theorists to visit skl.sh slash the style theorist 09241 or click the link in the description will get one month free. What are you waiting for? Open up a new tab and start exploring today. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. Now, back to our grass. Going into week two, we were going to try something a little bigger that could hopefully handle the large amount of human stress heading its way. Good morning. It is the start of us putting together our new desk setup with our new grass. So what's going to happen here, we're going to get the grass that goes under our desks, or in my case, my dining room table. But to do that, we have to go outside because the grass actually arrived the other day in a box. Evie is actually very familiar with this kind of grass because it's a box of grass. If you didn't know, in places like Los Angeles, sometimes it can be hard to find grass for your dog to go to the bathroom on. In those cases, you can actually order grass to your residence to put on your balcony, on your doorstep, anywhere that you have space for, including under your dining room table or desk so you can stick your feet in it while you work. As we unboxed our grass pads, I was praying to the grass overlords that everything had arrived alive. The grass is doing pretty okay. Look at that. This is our grass for the week. Uh, we'll call it... Wait, do you still want to call it? Seriously? Seriously? Harriet box grass. Clearly, I learned nothing from round one about not getting attached. Dan was also ready to commence level two grass touching time. And I'm about to put my feet on top of this grass, and I'm very excited about that. I used to live in the middle of the woods, and while I was there, one of my favorite things that I would do on occasion is get away from my computer, get away from all of my screens, and just go outside, like on our porch, and just kind of like have a coffee to just kind of start my day and to just kind of like unwind. Oh, God. But not everyone was as excited with their new I'm grass. I'm not gonna lie, Dan, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. 
as sweaty as we were. I don't like the smell. Nature smells gross. I feel weird about it. I do feel weird about it. It's a very unfamiliar experience not to touch grass. I'm very good at that, actually. But to do it inside in this capacity feels wrong. It feels wrong to me. And that amount of dirt and grass and greenery leading to so many bugs being inside of my place. And so I get a little bit anxious about that. I think bugs are cool. I don't love when they're in my space. We all fear the bug invasion, Ash. They'll come for us all one day. Whoops, sorry, got a little dark there for a second. Those grass- Yeah, way too dark. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a few bugs here and there is understandable, but Amy, your bug invasion is like planetary disaster. Us nightmares must really be getting to me. Once again, we were finding that for some of us, the grass only seemed to add to our stress. And as the check-in started to pop up in the group chat, I was starting to think that this meme may have led us astray. First reaction to sticking my feet in our grass under the table. Oh, this, okay. So like, it does feel like you go to a park, you take off your shoes to go run around in the grass, your backyard, what have you. Having that inside is weird. All right, three, two, one. Okay. Okay. Yep. Feels wrong. Feels wrong. This feels wrong. I had my doubts until we got an update from Mr. Tangy Dan himself. Yeah, I think I like it. Oh, I think I like that a lot. That is what I'm talking about, Dan. Embrace that which you cannot change and stick your feet in that grass with positivity. And he gave the chat something that it had been missing. Motivation to try and give new things another chance because they may just surprise you. And I know I gave it a lot of hate before, but um, kind of warmed up to the, the grass. It's kind of nice now that I'm used to it. Yeah, it's kind of nice. I just can play in the box. I was just so drained, like literally as I was walking into my room. I put my feet on the grass and it's like instant. Just something about it is so calming. Evie's trying to contemplate if she wants to go. To uh, 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 I think that was Minecraft. And if that's the case, there'll be a gapo. Mm -hmm. To the bathroom on it. Isn't that right, Evie? She's a cutie. I enjoy the touching experience a little bit more. It's fun to kind of play with, but um, it's also giving me a mild allergy attack. Now, while I often have allergies, I'm not usually allergic to grass, but having this big grass pad in the house turned out to be too much for my body to handle. I'm trying to figure out how to work with this grass because this grass sets off my allergies in a way the other one completely didn't. It's really just giving me headaches and making me sneeze. We'll see how it goes, but as of right now, this grass, I give a one out of 10. Yes, it feels better to touch, than the cat grass did because it is not dying, but it is making the rest of my body hurt and itch. So we're gonna use it sparingly and only in the direst of circumstances so that this experiment can still happen. What I'm learning is um, grass inside is bad. Ash agreed. Hey there, grass touchers. It's me, Ash, and this is a cry for help. It is day two of the grass pad um, underneath the desk. And let me just tell you right now, the grass pad is horrible. It's really- I'm not gonna lie. She looks like she, she have a smile, but she's saying something that is kind of worrisome. Mm-hmm really bad. I hate it. I dread coming to sit at my desk. Jerrica and Dan, on the other hand, were reaping all of the benefits. You know, I busted through a bunch of work and like over the last three days. So I'm feeling pretty confident and good about where I am right now. And like the grass is just enhancing the experience, to be honest. It's kind of making me feel like the weekend's tomorrow. And that's not true. I had to finish some meetings today. I feel like normally I would be a lot more stressed and anxious about all of the news and things I had to hear and all the stuff that's going on but I don't feel that bad and I'm kind of I guess like as an anxious tick maybe just like rubbing my feet on the grass and it's a uh, kind of nice I have to say I'm enjoying it we were split down the middle 50 50 much like people are on whether or not touching grass with your feet actually has any health benefits yes it's a thing not an only fans thing either it's called earthing which as an article for the cleveland clinic describes it is about having direct contact with the surface of the earth whether it's your bare feet your hands or other parts of your body hmm sounds a lot like being told to uh go touch grass 
Some claim it helps them sleep better, reduce body pain, and yes, even removes negative feelings and stress, much like Dan and Jerrica were reporting. Though there's not been enough research done on the subject to say if it's true or not. But at the same time, it was hard to deny how much the grass was leaving a positive impact on Dan and Jerrica. So what I think Amy is trying to say is more research needs to be done. And look at the bright sides. You make a video about it. So I'm pretty sure a lot more people is going to be more interested in this topic and do and a lot more scientists will be doing more research about it. I hope. Mm -hmm. As for me, I was less than impressed. I am feeling very itchy. It's not my skin. It's literally my nose and like the back of my throat. I wasn't expecting the grass pad to give me that reaction. So I'm gonna take a breather and try to help unirritate my nose. <laughs> uh, anyone have any clarity? I ran out. Ash, can you help a friend out, please? You see that? See this grass? Peep you. This is what I look at every day. I could be out there. My experiment could be sitting out there for intentional periods of time, just soaking in all the sunlight, the warmth of sun on those blades, the fresh air, the occasional... What just happened? Hey, editors, um, was that a glitch? That, that's where it ends? That can't be right. Okay, um, let me see if Ash can just re-upload it to the drive. Hey, Ash, looks like one of your videos didn't upload properly. Can you try again? Ash? Ash. This isn't funny. First lead ditches, then Ash. Why is everyone running away from this episode? Ugh. We can make this work. We can do it. We can make it work. Okay, 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 okay. Calm down, Amy. No stress. Just think grass thoughts. <sighs> oh, wait. We're at the oh, end. Oh, wait. That is the legendary background. The, the, the window SP background. It's the legendary background. Of week two, which means I'm having a snack because I'm upset. I'm honestly, I miss it. I miss the grass. Like, I'm so over this week. My stress levels are high, and all I wanted to do was put my freaking feet in the grass, and that was torn away from me. This is deeply upsetting. I really miss the grass. It was really nice to have, and now I don't have it. Um, it's still there. I could still use it. And I, I could stop whenever I want, but if I, if I could just have it for just like a couple more days. Yeah, I didn't mention it earlier, but between each round of grass, we took two days off to reset our stress levels with no grass, just to keep it a clean test. But I didn't expect the grass withdrawals to hit this hard. Jerrica, love? It, it, what, what, what are you doing? Not what it looks like. Okay, it's it's it was just a little time. It was just a little more time. So a little bit. Whoops! It looks like losing the grass may have ruined any of the positive vibes they'd built up over the last week. I have to say, I didn't have get my coworkers addicted to grass on my 2024 bingo card. But then again, no oh, that was unexpected. Mm -hmm. Nothing about this episode has felt normal. First, we killed all of our cat grass, sending us all into a spiral of despair. Then the grass pads nearly killed me. And throughout all of it, there was still no definitive proof if touching grass can make you less stressed and help your mental health. With only three people left to complete our grass touching journey, I had to believe in the experiment, in the grass, and in my friends. It was finally time to step outside to the ultimate grass pad, actual grass. That's right, we are finally taking the sentiment of go touch grass to its logical and literal conclusion. Instead of forcing the grass to come to us, we were about to meet- To be fair, that is the logical way to go. Go touch grass, cool. Step outside, breathe some, breathe some, fr breathe. some fresh air. <sighs> Respirate some fresh air, inhale some fresh air. Mm. The grass on its home turf. Evie and I are about to go find our grass for the day, aren't we? She's Let's go. so excited. I actually am really excited. We're gonna go find a little park and sit for a little while, take a little breather, and hopefully this is a really good uh, moment. <laughs> she cannot wait, everybody. She cannot wait. 
as we took a scenic stroll around our local park, I had to admit, I felt good. I felt refreshed. And most of all, I felt the stress of the past two weeks leaving my body. It was working. I was honestly shocked and ready to chalk it up to spending time with my best fur buddy. I mean, as the saying goes, happiness is a warm puppy. And boy, was it warm out in the hot LA sun. To confirm whether or not I was onto something, we needed to check in with our remaining grass touchers. The fact that I need to like go downstairs, put on my sandals, go out, put my feet in grass that is going to be most certainly dead. Why would I do that? So quite frankly, this sucks. Oh, that's not a great start. Um, maybe Jerrica is having better luck. I'm stressed and anxious just having to go here. It's really inconvenient going during the day and the closest grass is on a busy street <laughs> and it's not very relaxing. <laughs> so somehow the stress and anxiety is only <laughs> increasing. I'm sure we were in a nice forest sitting on that grass. It would be fun. Sure, that would be really nice and relaxing and very helpful, very mindful, very, mindful. <laughs> very nature, demure. Nature is very demure. <laughs> nature is so demure. Um, but this sucks. This did not look good, chat. And this time, it wasn't the grass's fault. It was the location. While I was having a great time in a nice quiet park, Dan and Jerrica didn't have that luxury. You see, not all nature is primed to help with our mental health. A study by the Mental Health Foundation of the UK found that people who had access to high quality nature spaces were more likely to say they felt their mental state was improved by spending time in nature. Hi but having said that, city planning, city planning is very important and throughout history, there have been several cases, hundreds of cases, even thousands of cases of bad city planning. I'm sorry. Quality nature is defined as a place with more green, both in the health of the plants as well as the biodiversity of the area, and as a place that is serene, calm, and clean. Like, say, a park and not a patch of grass next to a busy street. Clearly, I was at an advantage for that day. I'm not always going to be able to drive out to a park on a busy workday. So, this is what she said drive, car, highway. I'm lucky that in Singapore, our, we, our leaders recognize the importance of not being too dependent on cars, not being too dependent on vehicles, not being too dependent on roads, but instead focusing on public transport is more important because public transport is for the public. Mm -hmm. Could I replicate the same feeling with grass closer to home? Grass that, if it worked, maybe I could share with Dan and Jerrica. Because I'm running out of hands, we're clipping the mic to my braid. So this is my microphone right now. We are once again outside of my neighbor's windows and in front of all the construction people. But today, we're not here for the pool. We're here for this grass. Let's go touch it. I guess we just sit here. Let me give you a little scenic view. We have our right grass. We have our <laughs> left grass plus dirt. It feels nice. I'm not seeing any bugs. I'm just feeling pretty zen. Shocker of all shock, my little grass patch in the middle of my noisy neighbors and construction crews was working. Maybe it didn't have to be the perfect grass. Maybe it just had to be far enough away from my laptop and my internet connection to make me really sit back and actually finally relax. I'll be- True. With the absence of your phone, the absence of a computer for 50 minutes, for 30 minutes, during that period of no phones, no computers, just you, and maybe even your kids. That's why, if I'm not wrong, the importance of having 15 30 minutes of sambu uh, shijian, uh, which means uh, walk, walk, uh, uh, long guy, long guy, shijian. Yeah, this period of time is so important for human beings. Mm -hmm. 
Kiana's chat. It was nice, but it would be better with some company. I fired off a message to Dan and Jerrica, inviting them to come hang out in my newly discovered relaxation oasis and waited for their response. And I waited and <gasps> waited. Just like Lee and Ash, they just ghosted, leaving behind nothing except this, a blurry video of grass. What did it mean? Did they get lost? Were they out in the woods? Were they Blair witched? I was left with more <laughs> questions than answers as I headed into the final day of the experiment alone. Today, we are doing our final round of grass and it's a little bittersweet because I've enjoyed getting to see you every morning. And if I was honest, I was glad that you'd made it with me this far, chat. Unlike everyone else, you hadn't left me to touch grass alone. This journey had been rough, but what I was starting to see was that hiding behind all of that green grass was a secret. A secret to helping manage our stress and anxiety in a healthier way. And I, a text? Okay, look, I'm gonna share my point of view. You. When, when the thing say touch grass, you don't necessarily just touch grass. You also breathe in the air. You also exhale the air. You also listen to the ch uh, birds chipping, chipping. You also listen to the wind. You also feel the wind blow to your face. The feeling, you don't just necessarily touch grass per se, but you are part of the ecosystem. It makes you the observer. It makes you the grass toucher, part of the environment, this relaxing environment, part of Mother Nature. And that, for me as lead, for at least for me, it feels comforting. Mm -hmm. Sorry, chat, just a second. Join us? Is, is this a prank? Are we a prank channel now? Is that... Is that my grass spot? Chat, I had to figure out what was going on. I grabbed my camera, my mic, and my handy parasol and headed to check it out. And what I found blew my mind. Somehow, some way, sitting there in the grass, happier than I had ever seen them before, were my friends, smiling and stress-free. It was like somehow, one by one, each of them had found the answer, the secret I was only just coming to understand. And it had led them here here to this grassy field that shouldn't exist. They hadn't abandoned me at all. They had been waiting for me because I had to figure it out for myself. To realize that it had never been about the grass at all. As I went to join them in those big grassy fields, it was time for me to share that secret with you. When people tell you to go touch grass, what they're really telling you to do is take a step back from everything and kind of look at everything in a new perspective. Take a break, come back to a problem later. It's a call to reconnect with the real world. What I'm noticing now though. To stay grounded, to be relatable, and to think from other people's point of view. Mm -hmm. And also, maybe you are being too focused, you're too tunnel visioned, which, I, don't get me wrong, being focused is good, being tunnel vision is good, but being too engrossed into it is bad. Too much of a good thing is bad. Take a step back. Relax. Like, uh, let your mind be refreshed by something else. Anything else. Oh, the clouds. Oh, the ants. Oh, the beetles. Oh, the trees. Something that will get your mind off the topic, off the subject that you are so hyper-focused on doing, so hyper-engrossed into. Hope that helps. Mm -hmm. Is taking an actual break, not a little 10 minutes where you kind of don't look at your computer, but you're still staring at your phone, but you're still doing something that is part of the problem that's stressing you out. If you saw our recent game theory about marathon gaming, you'll know that research has consistently shown that breaks are important. On average, the most productive employees take a 15 minute break every hour where they get up and move around. This could be as simple as walking around their house or say going outside to touch grass. It wasn't about the activity. It was about taking a step back from your daily responsibilities and all your technological distractions. It's part mm, that's a saying in Chinese. Mm -hmm. Taking a break is so that you can walk the further distance. Mm -hmm. Part of what's 
feeding into that never ending cycle of bad thoughts and stress and things that you have to do. Stepping away from that and forcing yourself to disconnect for even 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if you can spare 30 minutes to an hour, that pays off. So do I think that going to touch grass is gonna solve all of your problems? No, no, touching grass is not going to make you a better person. It's not going to solve all the things that are causing you stress. You owe it to yourself to take- But one. indirectly it helps. Directly, well, things get complicated, but indirectly speaking, it helps with your mood, your, your atmosphere, your character, your personality. It helps. It's like a bonus. Well, I hope that helps. Moment to just- It's like a bath. Ah, I was thinking of, in, in terms of gaming, uh, it's like a bath. Mm -hmm. Step away, because what that's doing is basically letting your body reset and recalibrate so it's better equipped to go deal with those stressors and that noise and your responsibilities. Let yourself take a break and breathe. But hey, that's just a theory, a style theory. Keep going outside, <laughs> it's pretty nice. Want to learn more about how your environment can de-stress you? Click the box on the screen to learn more about feng shui. And I'll see you next Saturday morning. Oh, thank you so much, hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But hey, that's just a theory, a style theory. Keep looking sharp, mm -hmm. keep going outside. Mm -hmm. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you so much. Subscribe. But truly, thank you all. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and supporting my channel. Thank you.